Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hello. It's good to see so many familiar faces. I'm excited for what we have in store for today. Um, today, we're going to be playing the climate action simulation. And uh, hopefully, you all have gotten a chance to check out some of the module videos we've had uh, throughout the training series on the climate action simulation and we've seen some of the overviews and that kind of thing about what it is. Um, and we wanted to take two hours today, so keep that in mind. We're going to go through the yeah, zoom nom the take the. Welcome everyone, welcome, and uh, why don't we put everyone on mute if uh, if you are just joining? And let me make sure I'm not on mute. Great. Uh, <laughs> so again, uh, excited to have you all here. We're going to be going for two hours. Um, but I know that sounds like a lot. It will be broken up with a lot of different periods and we'll have breakout groups and that kind of thing. So it will fly by faster than you know. Um, oftentimes with these climate action simulations, we actually even stretch them to three hours. So keep in mind too, um, that this is a somewhat consolidated version. Um, so I'll explain a little bit about what we're doing and, uh, and then we'll get started as soon as we can. Um, so what we're going to be doing is, is a role-playing game. Um, we're going to have a welcome uh, to get us all set up in this role play. And then we're going to have two different rounds of negotiations. You're going to be playing a stakeholder uh, from some kind of group. And so keep that in mind. And you'll be taking on that the, the interests and uh, uh, different kind of expertise that a stakeholder might have. In, uh, in some area, more to come on that. We'll, we'll describe what we mean in just a second. So what the climate action simulation is, it's a group role-playing game to explore solutions for mitigating climate change. Uh, we're gonna be using En-ROADS uh, to test out the results, but it's En-ROADS is just a component of this entire kind of facilitated experience um, where you're gonna be interacting with your uh, fellow participants to come up with decisions, and then we'll get to test those out. Um, and keep in mind too, as you think about putting on your facilitator hat, as this is a training, um, what are, keep in mind the, that this can be ad adapted. This We've played this in a lot of different styles. Today, we're going to be playing it with a pretty large group. Oftentimes, we really recommend to keep uh, the number of people around, say, 40, 30 to 40 people. Um, we'll be playing with a big number where we've got about 80 people here so far and more are joining. Um, welcome if you're just joining and uh, we'll see how that works. And we've played it with even larger groups too. Um, you can take, you can use adaptations like um, using pull everywhere and different kinds of things, adding more groups, reducing the number of groups to make it fit the kind of group that you're working with. So keep that in mind as we go through um, in the chat, we'll try and be providing some uh, kind of meta analysis as to what's going on. Drew is there in the chat and uh, others from our team will be providing commentary uh, to kind of give you a sense of what's going on behind the scenes. Um, and as always, you can download the chat and read it later uh, if it's too much to look at the chat and listen to us and look at the screen all at the same time. All right. So how this is gonna work, and I, I alluded to this just briefly, but uh, you all are gonna be playing global leaders from sectors across business, government, and civil society. And we have been gathered together to negotiate a global climate solutions plan to limit global warming to less than two degrees and ideally limiting it to below 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. This is gonna be convened by the UN Secretary General, but some of you all will be representing government interests, but some of you will be coming from uh, business interests, others from uh, organizations like nonprofit organizations and that kind of thing. Uh, we'll be using inroads to explore the different actions and determine whether the climate solution plan that we've come up with Will, will be sufficient to reaching that goal. So we're gonna start by everyone's gonna go into breakout rooms. And what's gonna happen in these breakout rooms is that you're going to um, meet your team. So, so you can say hello to your team and then you're going to get a briefing statement. So in this briefing statement, which is two pages, 
skim it over, read over it, um, to become oriented to the interests of your particular team that you're playing. Um, when you arrive in your breakout group, you will know what team you are playing by looking at the top of your Zoom window. You see this red box here that will say the name of your breakout group, or as you're entering into the breakout group, it will say, you are being added to the conventional energy breakout group or the world government's breakout group. Um, and so that'll be your cue as to which briefing statement to grab. Um, uh, in the chat, we will provide a link to a Google document. In that Google document, you will find a link to the, that briefing statement. As well, you will also find if you have, if your Zoom is up to date and your computer um, can handle a Zoom backgrounds, get a Zoom background and uh, download that, add your virtual background, also change your name. So if you're just named, you know, right now I'm Ellie Johnston, comma, Climate Interactive. Uh, if I was in the conventional energy group, I would, I could change my name to Ellie Cl Conventional Energy or Ellie Johnston Conventional Energy. Um, so get yourself in a role. Uh, we, we're doing the best we can with the virtual setup. Um, and then and say hello to, to the people you're in um, your group with. Um, Caroline is going to be helping to host and bring everyone along. Caroline, do you have any additional things uh, that you would like to add uh, just as considerations as people enter into this first breakout room? Nope, just to make sure that if you can go ahead and click the, the Google link that we're pasting in the chat right now, so you'll have it open when you go into your breakout room. So. I accidentally sent it twice just a second ago, but I'm going to send it once more. Um, if everyone can just take one second, open that link, and then you should be good to go. And hang on, this will all come together and make more sense as you get your briefing statement and as you read, uh, you read things over. So uh, if you're just arriving, if you arrived a few minutes late and you're like, what's going on? Um, join the breakout room. Click on that Google Doc, find your briefing statement, and read read over, and that'll start getting us oriented. Then we'll come back here in five minutes or so after uh, just briefly reading over those statements and saying hello to, to your participants, and we will get started. So why don't we open up the breakout rooms? All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, it is great to have you all here at the UN negotiations for this Climate Action sum Summit. Um, I am very excited today to be able to introduce you all to the UN Secretary General, UN Secretary General Clara Iglesias. Um, I will turn it over to her for some remarks and we will get this negotiation underway. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you. Welcome to the Climate Action Summit. We're delighted to have you all here today as the key global stakeholders who have the power to work together and address climate change. And I would like to start by recognizing you all here in the room. We have the conventional energy group representing the fossil fuel corporations and the nuclear energy and electric utilities. We also have the clean tech group who are working to decarbonize our economies and increase our energy efficiency. We also have our land and agriculture and forestry groups, this global alliance of corporations and groups who are producing and securing our food and land. We also have the climate justice hawks who are doing an incredible job and at creating the social movement around climate change. And of course, we also have our world governments, developing nations, our rapidly emerging nations and developed nations. It was six years ago when the nations of the world decided to finally listen what the scientists have been warning about and committed to limit future global warming to no more than 2 degrees C or strive for 1.5 above pre-industrial levels. But so far we have failed. The concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere has reached a level never seen in at least the last 800,000 years and it's rising at unprecedented rates as a result of burning fossil fuels and developing our economies. The consequences of this are not far away into the future. They are happening now, and we're 
uh, we've already reached 1.1 degrees Celsius of warming. We're being affected by flooding, droughts, stronger hurricanes, record, record uh, heating waves in Europe, devastating forest fires in the US and Canada West Coast, Greenland and Antarctica melting. The Amazon forest once called the lungs of the world are now emitting as much carbon as they they, it is absorbing. And air pollution from PM 2.5 is, is the cause of one in five deaths globally. And the list goes on, but avoiding this worst impacts is still possible. We only need to act fast in this decade, according to the IPCC. But we have hope because we have seen uh, in the past that when humanity came together, could prove our courage and willpower to solve crises. And we have hope because the decision makers who can catalyze the solutions are here. We need to change the business as usual paradigm to reach the goal. And our mission today is clear. In this summit, you need to create a feasible roadmap to achieve this goal, balancing your needs and your stakeholder needs. I have the utmost confidence that of your ability to succeed today. And I thank you for coming, committing to this mission. So I leave you with our science advisor, Ellie Johnston, who will continue with the technicalities of the summit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Secretary General. It's a pleasure to have you all, have you here. And um, thank you for those strong remarks. Um, so today uh, we have been given a tool from the team at Climate Interactive. Um, this tool is called En-ROADS. We're gonna be using it as a way to assess the um, pledges that you all put forward and submit and to make sure that we're on track towards reaching this goal of uh, creating a scenario in which we limit warming to well below two degrees and aim for 1.5. Um, so the way this is going to work is that you all are going to go back to your negotiation rooms um, and for the first round you're going to propose one action per team um, and this can be a solution that you add to the uh, suite of all the other actions that we are planning to take together. Or if your team does not like a solution that has been proposed by another team, you can undo it. You can remove um, an action. Um, you only get one move per round, but keep in mind when you go to your breakout rooms to come up with uh, maybe two or three different actions in case a team uh, ahead of you proposes a similar action. Um, so we are going to then, uh, at, input the solutions one by one into the En-ROAD simulator and see if we can limit warming to below two degrees with all of you all as global leaders convened here today. Um, we will have at least two rounds for proposals, so keep that in mind. And we hope that we can keep working until we limit warming to, to below two degrees. However, time is very restricted today, so we will see how far as far as we can get. Um, so the next thing then is to keep in mind the different types of action you can take. So there, this, this is what we are looking at here of all of the different varieties of actions. You can discourage or encourage coal, oil, gas, uh, nuclear renewables. You can even um, propose that there will be a breakthrough in some new zero carbon technology. Um, you can think about energy efficiency in both our transport sector and across buildings and industry. Similarly, electrification in either our transport sector or buildings and industry. Or think about uh, the action that we might take across our land sector, forestry policy around planting trees or stopping deforestation or changing agricultural policy. Agricultural policy. We can even explore um, uh, removing carbon from the atmosphere through different carbon removal approaches, that uh, afforestation or uh, different technological carbon removal approaches. So, Consider among your team when you go into your back to the negotiations, um, what your strategy is, what, uh, which um, overall strategy would be your top priority given the interests of your uh, interest group. So we will have 15 minutes uh, for discussion in your breakout groups. So discuss with your team to form your overall strategy and then think about your first action. And then a key part of this is to um, select a representative um, who can give a 30 second, no more than 30 second speech um, uh, about why your policy 
is uh, the strategy that you want to pick. Make sure to identify if there are any co-benefits that might um, come with, uh, with your policy being enacted and um, any equity considerations that you have taken into consideration in the proposal um, for why we should move forward with your particular action. Hopefully that will be convincing enough so that other groups will not undo it. We have a lot of different interests um, in the room today, but I'm confident uh, that we can we can reach this global goal that the Secretary General has um, put out for us. So from here, um, let's uh, let's go to the breakout rooms. Um, you can grab this document uh, if that's helpful for you. Um, the link to it will be in the chat. But but mostly just identify your top three actions, the first one, and then pick a team leader who can give the presentation uh, when the when the breakout rooms close. Thank you and best of luck. And it looks like everyone is back from their breakout rooms. All right. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a productive negotiation round. I'm excited to hear the proposals that have been put forth. Um, to, to, to look at the proposals, we're going to be looking at um, the Inroads Climate Solutions Simulator. This is a tool developed by Climate Interactive and MIT Sloan. Um, it uses the best available science. And on the left, what you're looking at is a graph of global sources of primary energy from the year 2000 all the way out to 2100. You see coal here at the bottom, then in red, oil, then natural gas in blue. Green is representing renewables, wind and solar primarily. Uh, then we have bioenergy and nuclear on top. On the right, what we're looking at is greenhouse gas net emissions. So the fossil fuels among our energy sources, they release carbon dioxide and then all of the other sources of greenhouse gases give us this greenhouse gas net emissions uh, traje trajectory. So um, again, it's from the year 2000 out to 2100. This is our baseline scenario. So it's a scenario where we're not really assuming additional further action than what we're taking today. And where that leads us is to 3.6 degrees of warming by the end of the century. As the Secretary General said to us earlier, this has devastating impacts. Already we are seeing climate impacts at only about one degree of warming. So 3.6 degrees, uh, we absolutely have to avoid. Uh, the good news is, is I think you all have some of the solutions. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to call on each of the different groups and then you all are going to identify who your team leader is and we'll come off mute. You can either raise your hand or write into the chat if you are a team leader and um, we will get things started. So I'm actually going to start with, uh, why don't we start with the clean tech group. Um, clean tech, do you have a team leader and um, can you come off of mute and uh, provide us your 30 second appeal for what the action that you want to take is? And you may need to use the raise your hand feature also um, if you're not able to unmute. So we'll just be looking out for your representative to use the raise hand feature. All right, clean tech. Do we have? Great. Um, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Go ahead, Clean Tech. Um, so, welcome, everyone. I'm very happy to be here and to represent the Clean Tech group. Uh, we would like to present our position to you today. And we, of course, as the clean tech industry, we already know that the mar marginal costs of electricity are actually. Um, already speaking for us, we know that solar and wind are actually the cheapest options to generate electricity today already. However, we know that to, in order to reach the 1.5 or even 2 degree scenario, we need to keep the fossil fuels in the ground and that's the, our main point for today. However, as we can propose only one option, we are not going to advocate for making specific actions on each of the fossil fuels, but we would like to present suggest um, a global carbon price in a medium um, range. So um, if you could uh, move the, the slider for, uh, for us towards the medium, medium range of carbon price, that would be great. We uh, would like to point out that the carbon price 
taxes, um, basically fossil fuels, depending on their carbon intensity. And um, it also goes across all sectors and it does not, does not do any harm to renewables. We know that the ener energy costs are going to rise. However, there are different schemes around the world when the tax revenues can actually be given back to the poor and um, we can ensure that the poorest um, um, society groups are not going to uh, have any disadvantage of this policy measure. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clean Tech. Um, okay, so the, the Clean Technology Group um, has proposed a carbon price. So what this would be is a price on the emissions of carbon dioxide across their energy sector. Um, and so we, they said a medium carbon price. And so you can see the difference that makes. Uh, let me take that back though and, and replay that change. So you can see that with a medium carbon price um, that we have our temperature coming down from 3.6 to 3.2 degrees. And as was acknowledged by uh, the clean tech group, oh, let me put that back. Um, one of the things to keep in mind with the carbon price is the overall cost of energy. And so they have suggested some ways in which to, to um, be careful about this increase in the cost of energy that we see with carbon price um, and develop some kinds of schemes to uh, address the revenue and make sure that it goes to those who are facing the energy burden from that additional cost the most. Thank you so much, uh, Clean Tech. I'm gonna turn now um, to the team from the Land and Agricultural uh, Alliance. Um, Land and Agriculture, do you have a team representative who could propose your next action? And just a reminder to try to come off mute or use the raise hand feature and we'll unmute you, whoever is the representative. Great. And I've asked you to unmute, thank you. Good morning, colleagues from around the world. Um, we have a, a robust uh, group of sometimes competing interests between big ag, logging, uh, uh, food production, global food production, we support managing deforestation because it touches on all of our industries and sectors, but we uh, propose that we support subsidies and incentives for innovation in food production and logging so that the land is managed differently and that uh, processes for food production and approaches to food production are not just what we've been doing for the last 10,000 years, but take in the idea of innovation, uh, doing vertical farming, for instance, no-till, and other uh, adopting other approaches to food production and uh, the production of uh, lumber, et cetera, in the logging industry. Excellent. Thank you, Land for Agriculture and Forestry. And so do you have um, partic a one particular action within the inroads control panel? Um, yes, it would, it would move initially. Managing deforestation. So uh, that would be the slider to move. Great. Thank you so much. So the, the, the Land Agriculture and Forestry Group has proposed to reduce deforestation. Before I do this, think to yourself, what kind of an impact do you think that will have in terms of our global temperature outcome? Um, and as you, we're at 3.2 degrees, so think to yourself, do you think it'll come down to three degrees, 3.1 degrees, it will stay the same, or do you think it'll be a solution that will take us all the way down to two degrees? Um, let's test this out and see. And actually what I'll do before I even adjust it, I'm gonna switch over to our greenhouse gas, net emissions by gas and our land use and forestry emissions graph. So you can see here we have about three gigatons per year of emissions from deforestation. We're gonna reduce that so that by the middle of the century, if I replay this change, you can see it. By the middle of the century, we do not have any more deforestation emissions. So you can see that green comes down and we're at 3.1 degrees. 
Thank you so much, land, agriculture, and forestry. Uh, the next group I would like to hear from is our conventional energy um, industries and group. Um, could the representative from conventional energy um, please uh, tell, us, tell us about your proposed action? Our group proposes that we go all out on developing carbon removal technology. We believe that conventional energy sources are essential to continue the global march towards greater prosperity, that sharp changes with carbon taxes and the like will cause disruption in that economic prosperity. But over the long term, investment in carbon removal will allow our industry to transition into a removal technology while still providing in the intermediate time enough energy for the continuation of global prosperity. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Representative from Conventional Energy. So what I heard was an investment in technological carbon removal. And um, they said all in. So there would be a number of different technologies included within um, this all this one slider move. Um, this would encompass uh, bioenergy carbon capture and storage, direct air capture, enhanced mineralization. Also some with the agricultural soil carbon sequestration, which I'll also mention that our land agriculture and forestry group um, was, was mentioning interest in, and as well as biochar. So I'm gonna move this slider just slightly um, to show some growth in that, and I'll replay the change. So, and actually let me change the graph here so we can really take a look at what's going on. So as I replay the change, Check out this gray line that is appearing at the bottom. Those are our removals. And you can see that um, with some low growth in technological carbon removal, what we have is that we're, um, we're, about re we're removing just about a little bit more than what we had from our land use sector. Um, so that is uh, something to keep in mind. One thing also that we can look at is, um, is just, there are a number of different variables here. One thing we might be interested in is just the amount of land uh, for growing the CO2 removal biomass. And so you can see with the low growth here that this is taking about 100 million hectares, almost 100, 100 million hectares. This is about a third of the size of India. Um, so we could scale this up um, if that went, went, in, went further. And maybe um, in the next round, we'll see uh, conventional energy either doubling down on that or uh, taking a different a strategy. Thank you so much, Conventional Energy. Um, and uh, why don't we turn to our um, group representing our developing nations and um, hear what, what they are thinking about in terms of um, climate action. Is there a representative from developing nations that would um, give us your 30 second? Great. Hello, thank you. Uh, we agree with the clean tech group that we must put a price on carbon. All the carbon needs to stay in the ground. The rich countries of this world have been polluting the world at our expense for much too long, but a medium carbon price will not be sufficient. And there must be very strong protections to make that money go to a fund for developing nations. What we will do with that fund is we will educate our women and girls and invest in reforestation, invest in electrification and renewables energy, renewable energy infrastructure for our people. And, um, and so by getting an even higher carbon price, we will see many co-benefits. Cool we know that, uh, that education for women and girls is going to slow population growth and will also uh, enable our people to use our indigenous knowledge to reforest our areas and to use nature-based carbon capture solutions. So we are going to fund all these co-benefits cool with a higher carbon price. Uh, we want a high carbon price, medium will not do it. This is in a medium time. Great, thank you, uh, Representative from Developing Nations. Um, I heard a very clear call to action around specifically to thank you for also identifying some of those additional ways in which you see the revenue providing benefits. So we're about at $50 a ton right now. So I will add another $50 or so to bring our carbon price up to $100 per ton of CO2. Um, 
And you can see, let me replay the change in case you didn't notice uh, what that did. So we were at 2.9 degrees and you see global greenhouse gas emissions coming down. Um, and then an ad additionally, pay attention to what's happening here on the right. I mean, excuse me, on the left. Um, so our coal, which was, had flattened off there, is now coming down slightly. Um, we also see an increase in the growth of renewable energy. I can zero in on this a little bit more. So what's happening is as we're really restricting all of that coal, oil, and gas, which are see, experiencing higher prices uh, due to that carbon price, we're seeing more um, re from renewable energy. Um, so just that additional carbon price, you can see a boost in renewable energy. It's kind of like if you had a balloon and you're squeezing one sector of it to try and restrict it, then something else grows because we need to meet energy demand. Great. Um, thank you so much. Let's keep moving. Um, next, I want to hear from our, our, um, our emerging nations. Um, building on uh, what, what we have heard from the developing nations, emerging nations. Um, uh, Representative Peter, could you please um, come forward? Yes, thank you. Um, just to clarify, emerging nations are nations like China, India, Indonesia, Brazil, Mexico, and South Africa. So not the um, poorest developing nations, but also not the first world. We uh, agree with several of the proposals that have already been made uh, and would like to add the proposal to significantly subsidize renewable energy. And we have several reasons for proposing that. One is um, we believe that uh, our nations may be, able, be well positioned to become manufacturers of things like solar panels and wind turbines. And uh, we, we understand that, that renewable energy is the wave of the future and we don't want all that manufacturing to, to go to the first world countries. Um, and we think by subsidizing that we can, we can uh, increase the amount of renewables we can save our citizens significant money uh, because the, the renewable energy they get will be cheaper than the, the old traditional energy. Um, some of our nations do not have any reserves of traditional coal, oil, and gas and are spending a lot of money to import those things and would be better off with renewable energy uh, that we can, can generate uh, within our own countries. Um, Great. So Let's let's go with that. Thank you, uh, Representative Peter from Rapidly Emerging Nations. Okay, so the proposal was to subsidize renewable energy. Um, so before I do this, also think to yourself, um, how much do you think that this additional subsidy, this subsidy uh, will have in terms of lowering our global temperature change? Um, so we already have a carbon price and we're taking some action around our land use uh, as well as conventional energy is developing technological carbon removal. What if we have a subsidized renewable energy? Let's uh, replay that change in case you didn't see it. So here's renewable energy. You can definitely notice it growing even further. Um, our temperature is now down to 2.6, was at 2.7, and our greenhouse gas emissions are coming down somewhat. Um, so definitely helping to boost that industry and um, get it going in those rapidly emerging nations. Thank you. Okay, so now I'd like to hear from the representative from our developed nations. We have three different groups uh, today representing different world governments. Um, and let's hear it from Mary, Ella, Mary Ellen, our representative from de de developed nations. Hello, thank you. Um, we from the developed nations uh, debated many of the same uh, proposals from others, such as uh, carbon price and subsidizing renewables. Uh, I think that because those um, ideas have already been put forward, uh, we'd like to shift to um, methane reduction. Um, 
We believe that with lowering temperatures, uh, methane is a greenhouse gas that needs um, significant attention. Um, it comes from uh, some of the fracked gassing activities and also with um, the increased heat, we're seeing escapes from uh, developed nations such as Russia. So at this point in time, uh, we would like to focus on um, medium to significant efforts to reduce uh, methane and other um, gases to fight the increase of, of temperature by 2100. Great, thank you, Representative Mary Ellen. Um, so I'm gonna switch over our, the graph back to this one that we were looking at earlier. So again, this graph is showing us greenhouse gas net emissions by gas. Um, the developed nations really zeroed in on methane emissions. That's this blue wedge here. You can see uh, the gray wedge representing our energy carbon dioxide emissions. That was initially going up and we've taken significant action so that that's much lower. We also are drawing down um, some carbon from the atmosphere through our carbon dioxide removal and we've eliminated those emissions from land use and CO2, but let's take action on methane emissions and see where that can get us. So I'm going to moderately reduce our methane emissions. Um, and we see there that the impact that that makes. So we were at 2.6 degrees, that brings us down to 2.4 degrees, making significant progress there. Um, I also draw your attention to, to uh, Representative Mary Ellen, she, she alluded to um, the methane emissions also coming from uh, Russia and areas in the north where because of uh, warming temperatures, we're seeing the methane getting released from the permafrost. Um, so that isn't actually included in that slider, but it's definitely a really important factor that we wanna be mitigating and avoiding. And that's another reason why we must keep temperatures as low as possible. Thank you so much, developed nations. I'm gonna turn now to um, our industry and commerce group. And I would like to hear from you all. Um, is the, great, let's um, have the representative from industry and commerce, Pl please come forward. Yeah, hi. So um, we've discussed all the, uh, all the effects that, uh, that different things can have on, the, on, on our industry. And we have a, um, a, a responsibility towards um, the jobs that we're creating, as well as the, um, the, um, uh, our shareholders, of course. Now, not all energy is just electricity. So we are, we are um, using a lot of en en energy, for instance, for concrete uh, manufacturing or for, uh, for steel manufacturing. And there are a lot of things that we need to do in order to make a change, um, but to just Put us, put us as the, the, the biggest burden then and uh, put a carbon price on the industry just like that is not going to, uh, to be very, very beneficial. And uh, we see that if we do this, um, this will cost us an enormous amount of change of, um, of shift of the industry from the, where we are right now to countries that are going to be, uh, put a, a big benefit to the um, for the industry, um, as they are not doing it as uh, uh, other countries. So we said that we want to um, get rid of the whole carbon price, one hundred percent. Okay, and that's the that's the, uh, the the whole thing. We think that there are a lot of things that we that we need to do before we can do this, but at least for now, we'll get rid of the carbon price. Okay. All right. Um, you all heard it from the commerce and industry group. They want to remove the carbon price. Um, so we had two different groups propose a carbon price. So I'm going to back it off um, $50. Um, so it is at $100 and we're going to reduce it um, because of what the commerce and industry group has asked for. Okay, we'll see what this does. So we were, um, yeah, well, let's replay. We were at 2.4, now we're at 2.6. Um, let's hope in the second round that our industry and commerce um, will put us on that track towards uh, reducing global temperature change. Uh, I heard some allusions to some some proactive solutions. So I'm I as uh, the science advisor, I'm hopeful, but uh, we will see how how the additional negotiations play out. Um, last but not least, I would really love to hear from our civil societies groups. 
Um, could the representative from the Climate Justice Hawks uh, please um, take 30 seconds and um, uh, let us know where you all are, um, sit. All right, Representative Ellen Siegel, please. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, we, we took to heart the introductory speech by our chairperson. We are alarmed, we are terrified, we are distressed. There aren't enough words to say how much we understand that this crisis is real, it's now, and we have to take action now. We've wasted 30 years. We are very, very, very committed uh, our group sees that we can align quite well with uh, the developing nations, the Nessus talk, and with Peter, the emerging nations talk. And we also align very much with Wiki's talk from the Green Tech Group. We believe in building coalitions of our different interest groups. And our solution for right now is a carbon price of $200 a ton now. We will sort it out. Uh, in terms of equity, we will return some of that. As, as you know, the carbon, uh, the CCL model for returning. Oh, okay, sorry, somebody's messaging. So uh, we want uh, our solution right now is go big, go bold, or go home. We're, we're going to have unbelievable catastrophes if we don't keep that stuff in the ground now. And the only way to do it is governments have got to put that as a no more extractions. Citizens Climate Lobby, Vanessa. All right. Thank you for that proposal from the Climate Justice Hawks representing a diverse alliance of um, different um, climate focused organizations thinking about the different um, equity considerations there. They are coming back uh, swinging for a carbon price. So we just heard from industry and commerce that they wanted to undo it. Um, let's have the Climate Justice Hawks will come in and they are protesting those pipelines. And uh, now we will put this back to $100. And maybe in the second negotiation round, we can hear from others and continue to bring that carbon price higher um, if there are advocates out there for that. But right now, this closes out our first negotiation round. Um, I am excited to hear that the UN Secretary General was able to listen in on uh, our negotiations today. And I think she has some remarks for us um, about where we sit. Um, so we have definitely made some progress, but we have some further ways to go. Um, I'm feeling optimistic and hopeful, um, but I don't know whether that's just uh, the weather outside today. Um, Secretary General, what is your assessment of things? Thank you. Yes, you're doing a good job. We're getting closer to our goal but I need more ambition from you. I need more hope. We're facing our most important global threat and I see fragmented responses. I'm not seeing unity here. So this time I encourage you to reverse this. I encourage real negotiations between groups to get an agreement. Take a few minutes to align with your groups and discuss how these actions will follow up as a team. Negotiate with others, uh, lobby them to change their positions if necessary, find alliances. I need more unity from you. So we will proceed to a second round of negotiations and we suggest keeping a couple of representatives at your table this time and sending the rest to talk to other groups. And you will have 15 minutes for these team meetings and negotiations. So I hope you keep the good work. And are we ready to send people back to their breakout rooms? Yes, uh, thank you, Secretary General. Let me um, pull up the slide. So just uh, to, to tell you all, you can switch and you can join any of the other negotiating groups as you wish. So the way to do this, um, if you are on Zoom on your desktop computer, um, uh, you can click the the thing that says breakout rooms on your control panel for Zoom. And then you'll get a pop-up window that lists all the groups and how many people are in each one. Um, when you go to that, hover over 
the number of people in the room and it and then you will get a button that says join and it will indicate that you can join the group if you don't have this feature just wait in your negotiating room and maybe people will join you and and you can strategize with your team um so definitely don't um some people may want to stay back um but why don't we go to the breakout rooms here and the uh, one more last thing too make sure you're identifying again what your one uh, primary action is that you want to take in the second round. And if uh, if that action is already taken, come up with a second or third choice. All right, let's go. Let's go to the breakout rooms. All right, everyone has returned from the breakout rooms. Great. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that was a productive negotiation round. We heard the UN Secretary General before we went into those negotiations calling for us to find unity. I hope you were successful in that. Um, I'm excited to hear where these proposals um, in this next negotiation round take us. I, um, we are getting close to that um, goal of staying well below two degrees. Hopefully we can even stay below 1.5. Um, and to kick us off, I'll go in the same order as we went in before and hear from the team leaders again. Um, so why don't we start with clean tech? Clean tech. Um, where are you all at with these negotiations? And if you raise your hand again, clean tech will know who your leader is. Uh, I believe it was uh, wiki last time. Can we ask you to come forward and unmute? I was the leader last time, but now it's Terry. I don't know if Terry can oh, hear us. Okay. Thank you. Terry, if you could come forward, you can either raise your hand or I can ask you to unmute right now. There you go. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thanks. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, my name is Terry and I represent the, the Forward Thinking Clean Tech Group. Uh, we had a fantastic uh, meeting, um, a very short but fruitful 15 minutes. Uh, we had some interaction with the conventional energy group and the climate justice group, and um, they put together and put forward some very interesting proposals. Uh, what we want to focus on in this round is the electrification of the transport sector. Um, and we did get some support from the, the climate uh, justice group. Uh, we believe that if we can achieve this and uh, source the power and the energy systems from renewables to help us electrify the transport system, uh, it will have a considerable impact on not just global emissions, but temperature and also keeping coal, oil and natural gas in the ground. Um, this was obviously opposed um, in our discussions with the conventional energy group. But our position is at this stage that uh, we're looking for a 100% electrification of the transport sector. All right, thank you so much, Clean Tech. So transport sector, um, ramping up the electrification there. You'll notice that with our previous policies uh, with the carbon price and the renewables energy subsidy, this wedge showing our oil doesn't change, didn't change too much. Let's actually, we'll zero in on that before I make the change and see how much oil primary energy demand. It was going up steadily. It's about flat now. We're still using a lot of oil. So let's watch what happens when we electrify the transport sector. So I'm gonna electrify it. We're gonna highly incentivize it. And you can see there, oil, oil demand comes down significantly. It does rebound some there towards the end of the century, and we could look at what's going on there uh, later on. But uh, if we see here, and then I'm gonna replay the change and we'll really look at what's going on. So highly incentivized transport electrification, and you see greenhouse gas emissions come. No, no significant change in our transport sector, but you did see that change uh, in oil use. Um, so it definitely helps some. And actually, if we replay the change too, you can, you can, if you're looking at the Fahrenheit there, for those of uh, our negotiators coming from the United States in particular, uh, you might be interested in the Fahrenheit, uh, you, can do, you can detect some change there. Thank you, Clean Tech. Um, next, let's hear from land, agriculture, and forestry.
Go ahead, Representative Leslie. Good afternoon. Uh, our group uh, representing forest land agriculture was in conversation with developing nations and I believe another group. Uh, and one of the things we recognize as the globe will heat up is that reducing energy use is really the first and you know first issue that will protect lives around the world. So we are focused at the moment on buildings and industry and energy efficiency. Uh, if we are uh, making existing building stock energy efficient for starters in uh, in around the globe, but also incentivizing insulation to protect uh, communities at risk, people at risk around the world, uh, to protect them from uh, increasing uh, warming. So we'd like to see energy efficiency dramatically improved under buildings and industry. And we're supporting, we're supporting a significant carbon price um, in negotiation with uh, developing nations. Uh, that we had a very, very robust discussion. And uh, we, we certainly support that uh, with apologies to commerce and industry. We think, that, uh, we think that there is a way through that will not actually destroy commerce and industry. But we'd also like to support in that, in that uh, sector uh, using low carbon building materials, including wood, renewable and sustainably produced uh, 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 wood products, as well as low carbon concrete. So we're really focused on buildings at the moment. Great. Thank you so much, Land Agriculture and Forestry, um, for your contributions to low carbon and more efficient ways of um, building buildings and um, conducting industry. So we're going to increase the energy efficiency of buildings and industry. And watch as I do this, Draw your eye here to the very top of this line, which is kind of showing our global energy demand. So as I do this, and we highly increase the energy efficiency across buildings and industry, I'll replay the change. So you see total uh, energy demand was on an increasing trajectory. It's now about flattened out. And what this means is this tail that we saw kind of kicking up here from greenhouse gas emissions that was just coming from growing energy demand, growing population, growing economic productivity uh, has now flattened out. So we're increasingly uh, decoupling our carbon emissions from our economic growth and energy efficiency is helping along the way. That brings us to 2.2 degrees. Um, we have made forward progress that brought us down uh, two tenths of a degree. Thank you for that contribution, land, agriculture, and forestry. Next, I'd like to hear from uh, conventional energy. Hi, uh, thanks for inviting us to participate. We want to applaud land, agriculture, and forestry. They did a great job of showing how smart it is not to waste energy. And we support their move for energy efficiency in buildings. And we'd like to um, extrapolate from that and support energy efficiency with transportation. It's really important to move forward and change our world and save our planet in a way that is gentle and it doesn't cause harm like carbon pricing would cause. So energy efficiency and transportation is a smart move. Again, we um, we think it's, it's important not to be hurtful to people and carbon pricing can really damage the world. Uh, we saw lots of riots when gasoline prices went up dramatically in a move uh, to curb um, conventional energy. So we need to move in a way that doesn't harm other people. Thank you. All right. Thanks for that conventional energy advocating for the proactive approach. Lots of commentary about carbon pricing. I'm noticing even though uh, groups aren't actually touching that that uh, lever, but uh, lots of commentary around it. I guess we may hear more about it in uh, future proposals. Um, definitely some conversation around that that clearly happened during the negotiations. All right, so in addition to buildings and industry and energy efficiency, which I just increased in the last uh, proposal, we're going to also increase transport energy efficiency. Okay, that brings us down from 2.2 to 2.1, and you can see our oil emissions really getting further constrained through this efficiency and just overall energy demand. You can see 
if I just look here at energy demand, initially in our baseline scenario, energy demand was growing steadily throughout the end of the century. Now these energy efficiency improvements, um, in particular, we've we've really plateaued and leveled off our energy consumption. Um, so that was a, a helpful contribution there. Next, I would like to hear um, from our uh, representative from developing nations. All right, great. Vanessa from Developing Nations, welcome back. Hello, thank you. Uh, we would like to uh, say that we, our team has supported many of the things that are, uh, that have been discussed already. We also would like to see greater energy efficiency in transport and in buildings and industry. Um, a lot of inefficient machinery is dumped on us, especially on our African nations, and it uh, is bad for our health and it's bad for our overall um, well-being. And so we want to see efficiency everywhere, which also will be affected by education. So educating the people, leading us to a better energy efficiency. And we're going to invest in our people with that dividend from the carbon price. So it's very important to us that we maintain that high carbon price. And we want to thank all of our partners in keeping that high. Uh, one thing that we were considering, because we do want to acknowledge that we are a, a global community and that as uh, the rich countries that have, that have been extracting from our nations for so long, uh, as they are in going through a painful transition and beginning to know the pain of some of the other countries of the world, we would like to show them that we understand and that we support also the electrification of industry and commerce. So we would like to go ahead and uh, move the electrification on buildings and industry up. We believe that a, a high carbon price can uh, provide a dividend that will allow developing countries to invest in education and land use policies and building renewable energy infrastructure for us. And for carbon, for industry and commerce, they can uh, use the, some of that dividend also to electrify and move in to the 21st century and we can all move together. So we'd like to increase uh, electrification of buildings and industry. Great, thank you so much, uh, Representative Vanessa. So I'm going to, uh, increase our electrification of buildings and industry. So what this is, is, uh, you know, moving away from uh, cook stoves and uh, cooking devices powered by coal or gas and making them all electric. Um, that cleans the air in, uh, in inside people's homes. Um, this is also shifting industrial processes over to be powered by electrical motors and those kinds of things. Looking at how we heat our homes and heat our buildings and switching those to uh, you know, high efficiency heat pumps and things like that. That's all encompassed here um, in this electrification of buildings and industry. And I'll replay the change. Um, and you see here, I can detect some change there in our Fahrenheit, but it didn't bring us down to two just yet. Um, we are making progress though. Um, so why don't we just continue and, and we'll see where we land at the end of this round. Um, next up, can I hear from uh, the representative from Emerging Nations? Great, go ahead, Peter. Yes. Um, well, I'll make this fairly quick because we're gonna propose more of what we proposed last time, which is the subsidy of renewables and for the same reasons, to promote jobs and to save our folks money in the long run. Great, um, all right, that's easy. So more subsidy for renewable energy. Let's push this all the way up so that it is at its maximum level. Um, and if we look here, we can really zero in on kind of the financial picture here. Um, you see this cost of uh, now with our subsidies, wind and solar in particular, has by, you know, here in 2022, it passes and is becoming, starting to become cheaper than everything else. But really, um, uh, for the rest of the century, renewables uh, are dominating, thanks to that high subsidy in renewable energy, and um, also that carbon price, which that carbon price is reflected there, where you see um, the uh, other energy sources that release carbon dioxide. Um, increasing in terms of their marginal cost of energy production. Thank you for that, Rapidly Emerging Nations. And uh, now I'll turn to the developed nations.
All right, Representative Mary Ellen, please. Hello, thank you. Um, we definitely support um, the proposals made by the emerging nations. We believe electrification and building and transport, uh, the technology is there and it will create a lot of local jobs, which all of our countries need, as well as produce health benefits in terms of reducing particulate matter and um, other uh, emissions that cause uh, negative health. Um, so what we would like to do is we would like to maximize the energy efficiency of, um, uh, let's say, transportation uh, to keep it to one slider. If we can maximize both, that would be great. But if just one, let's go to transportation, maximize it out um, and uh, see how that uh, can further improve our situation. Thank you. Great. Thank you, developed nations. All right. You heard um, from Representative Mary Ellen. I'm going to maximize this. And uh, so you can detect the change again if you look at our total energy demand, this, which is the, um, all of these different lines stacked on top of each other. I'll replay the change. You can see that comes down some as we maximize energy efficiency. We'd already taken some action there. Um, so really trying to, work, to figure out where we can get um, our low hanging fruit um, is sort of gone, so to speak, and we're reaching higher. Uh, to try and figure out where we can uh, further reduce emissions to uh, get to those global goals. Thank you very much. All right, now I'm going to turn to, I believe, our in industry and commerce group. I saw a lot of negotiations happening uh, around that team, um, and I'm curious to hear uh, where you all have landed in terms of what you'd like to see next. Uh, please. Yes, hi. This is Dirk Joost again from uh, Commerce and Industry. Um, it was a very controversial proposal that we did, indeed. Um, it's to protect our industry and to make sure that it, it is uh, going to work as a total. And we are very much aware that there are many other things that we need to do in order to make and to protect this industry or our industry. So um, we did have a lot of discussions uh, also with the other groups, um, which in the end up uh, being a little bit too much maybe, but um, we did get the attention as we wanted, um, but we want to, uh, to go in a different direction for this time because in, uh, only with uh, reducing the carbon price is not going to help us. We need to really get um, more efficiency in this, in this world. So that's why we wanted to propose the, um, the energy efficiency for the industry to be maximized. Um, so we have like the, the best opportunity out there to make a great industry and to make a lot of jobs and a lot of money for this world. All right, thanks, uh, industry and commerce. So maximizing energy efficiency, this covers um, everything from the appliances and the consumer goods that uh, fill our stores that we buy from retail locations all the way on over to how those goods are produced. So those supply chains, how can we make those more efficient? Um, so we're doing everything we can to maximize the efficiency of this. And when I'm moving this slider, wait, before actually I wanna even explain more, look at this. Okay, we made it to two degrees. So hooray, huge progress here, great job. Um, industry and commerce coming through with that final element there that got us to two degrees. And um, those of you who are students of the Paris Agreement will know that the goal is not just two degrees. The goal says we, need, we must limit warming to well below two degrees and aim towards 1.5. So uh, we have a few more groups to hear proposals from, and I am excited to hear from them. Or actually, we just have one more group. Climate Hawks will come up next. Okay, I'm actually uh, looking at the time too, and we're running short on that. Climate Hawks, uh, Representative Siegel, please um, come forward with your propo proposal. All right, you're unmuted. Okay, thank you. Um, we are standing by the uh, a sharp and significant and immediate carbon price. Uh, however, we still want very much to build a coalition with clean tech, the emerging and developing nations, and with agriculture and land. Uh, we are open to, as a secondary, considering afforestation uh, and some carbon sequestration 
with absolute protection of indigenous lands and ways of life so that those strategies, which sound great, do not have a, an adverse potential on uh, racial and um, cultural uh, equity. There's uh, a lot of potential for damage there by letting technology take over. Technology is not our favored strategy. And if we were going to move any of the sliders, we might reduce the technological, uh, we might add a forestation. And uh, honestly, I can't remember what bioenergy does. So, um, if so, so climate justice hawks, which one, one slider move uh, do you propose? Is well, if, if, because if, uh, can we put the carbon price back up or do we have to do yeah, it? First? Yeah, we can. Let's, uh, um, I will open that up and let's add another $50 to it. So we were at 100, now we're at $150 a ton. Yep. Um, let's see where that uh, goes. Um, that puts us at very high. And I know, um, earlier. Um, climate justice hawks, you, I think you had proposed a $200. We I'll just put it there. That's um, what the science says. The science says we are absolutely should price it at 200 to 250 a ton. All right. Um, so Chicago scientists with that $200 a ton carbon price, you can see where we are. If I replay that change, uh, we were at two degrees. Now we are at 1.9. Uh, so that brings us down below two degrees. I also unfortunately have to call the negotiations right here. We are out of time. Um, I am so glad though to see us at, uh, let me put that back at 200, um, at 1.9. I feel like with more negotiations, we would be able to push this even further. Um, I definitely, this round heard a lot more a uh, sense of coalition building and people coming around the different groups, aligning their interests, naming their priorities. Um, so congratulations to you all on the significant progress you made. Um, uh, I'm gonna turn very briefly, uh, Secretary General, do you have any just kind of closing remarks? I'll give you the final word in this negotiation. I just wanna thank you all. And I hope to see this roadmap implemented soon. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all so much. Okay, so now I'm the negotiations are over. I am going to um, get the link to this, share it with you all. So I will put that into the chat. And um, this is our scenario that we have created together. I'm going to remove my virtual background because I am no longer at the UN. I'm back. Just Ellie Johnston sitting in my house. Um, you all can remove your uh, names or backgrounds if you wish to. Um, and uh, I want to take a minute. We have just a few minutes left. And this was intense. There were negotiations. People were coming into your breakout rooms. You were going into other people's breakout rooms. The Secretary General was with us and telling us we needed to take more action. And we did. We came up with a scenario that leads us towards 1.9. Let's take a minute, a minute of silence, and just reflect on, uh, on, on, on where we are at. Um, so think of something that you would think about this scenario that we created. Um, so going back here, we have high subsidies for renewables, a high $200 carbon price, lots of energy efficiency across our whole energy using sectors, uh, lots of electrification, we're stopping deforestation, we have some technological carbon removal, um, and we're also reducing methane and those other greenhouse gases. So one minute, I've got my watch right here. Um, think about something that you would love about being a part of this future. And as it comes to mind, feel free to write it into the chat. We'll, we'll, have, we'll re take, take reflections after the one minute. Uh, but yeah, let's just take one minute.
Okay, thank you all. Um, right into the chat if something came to mind um, uh, in that minute to just reflect on this experience. Um, we have just a couple minutes. Um, we'll close at the top of the hour, um, but um, I know some of us from the Climate Interactive team can stick around too um, if there were questions or things that uh, we want to go in deeper, but recognize you all have been here for two hours. That's a lot of time. Um, and so feel free to turn to other things too, but we'll stick around for a few more minutes afterwards. Uh, look, I'll just pull up in the chat here. Let's see, we need to work together. Um, we have been changing mindsets and is impossible. What seemed impossible can be possible. Um, I think it can be done. Collaboration, yeah, a lot of people really emphasizing um, um, how we need to come together. People feeling hopeful, they're concerned on the motives for developed countries and commerce and industry. Yeah, we heard some of those um, uh, different interest groups. Um, and uh, also just feeling grateful that there are so many people committed to fighting the chaos, um, like a giant support group. Um, we need to do more work to convince our friends. Um, thanks everyone, well done. I see mention of a glimpse of hope. Uh, and this is the first time I've opened up the chat too. So it's great to see all of your different messages. Everyone, you can scroll through these yourselves and, uh, and see everyone else's different uh, reflections. Thank you all so much for your participation today. Um, one thing I like to share as, as a way of reflecting on this experience and thinking about where does this go or what can we do? We don't have time to get into it in depth, but um, this is a graphic that I like um, uh, that to think about the different layers in which you have um, the ability to make change. So we are each individuals acting in our own private and personal ways. Uh, we can learn about things. We can donate our time and money if uh, we can walk, we can change our diets, things like that. Um, then beyond that, there's our social network that we have, the communities that we're a part of, our friends um, that we can teach, we can persuade, we can run events for. Um, then beyond that, we, have, we might have an organizational layer. Maybe we're part of businesses or organizations in which or we can build organizations and companies that are making a difference. Beyond that, we have the public sphere, um, thinking about the ways in which governments can be influenced and that kind of thing. And then be, even beyond that is this kind of big cultural sphere. Um, so that's one way of just helping to frame and think about the different layers and ways in which we can, we can take action. I hope that's helpful for you. Um, and of course, you all are all part of our inroads training. So we, I hope that was a, a powerful experience to see what the climate action simulation is all about. I, we tried to run it kind of uh, as a good example as to how, how it might work. Um, some of you can might imagine cool ways to adapt this in all different kinds of ways, new technologies that can be brought in to really enhance the experience of the climate action simulation. We would love to hear your stories and screenshots, photos, whatever it may be um, about this. And of course, it can be run in person too. We've done it in big rooms with tables and chairs um, and it works really well that way too. Um, uh, so we'll wrap up here, but one thing I wanted to mention is that um, I know some of you all have mentioned an eagerness to connect in further ways. Um, so we've reached out to some of our partners and we have meetup groups. Um, so particularly for um, uh, people um, who are in Latin America, or if you're coming from and thinking about uses of inroads in the business or private sector, we have two informal meetups happening this month. Um, that you can join. These are in addition to the live sessions, uh, totally optional, but just as another way in which you can connect with others. Um, we'll be sending details about these meetups if you wanna register for them in the follow-up email. So I don't have the links to register for them right now, but look, for your, look in your email um, and that'll just be an opportunity to connect uh, with other people who are thinking about inroads uses. And you know, maybe we can have fur further meetups in the future. Uh, this is just kind of the start of how we can continue to build relationships to each other um, and share ideas and how we might engage others. It's um, so great to have you all a part of this. 
And I hope you enjoy the, um, the new module that we just released today. It's all about advanced facilitation. Drew has uh, done, I think Drew, most of the videos are from Drew this week. And there are a lot of really cool techniques and little things um, that you might not have thought about that come up in facilitation. So check out those videos um, and we'll go into advanced facilitation techniques more next week on the live session. Uh, but until then, uh, take care, goodbye. Uh, as Drew says, go get them. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I really appreciate your dedication out there. And um, feel free to stick around if you have any questions and maybe anyone from the team, if you see questions or things that we should go into, um, raise them and we can discuss. But uh, if you've got to run, take care and uh, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Um, okay, anyone see any questions? Uh, yes, we'll send a follow-up email uh, with invites to the events that I mentioned. Um, so if you're interested in that Latin American meetup group or the business or both, um, we'll send links to register to those. Um, uh, Caroline mentions uh, COP26 and ways in which we could integrate COP26 info with En-ROADS. That's a great um, point. And actually, um, we have a whole other role-playing simulation that's all focused on making a mock cop. And I know that some of our En-ROADS climate ambassadors have even um, experimented with ways in which to couple our other um, role-playing simulation called the World Climate Simulation with the Climate Action Simulation in kind of a hybrid event format that um, I actually haven't participated in myself, but sounds really fun. Um, so the, what the world climate simulation is, is we break groups, rather than having these industry groups, conventional energy and clean tech, we just focus on the government groups. Um, so we, and we, and we can do even more groups than we had today. Today, we just have three government groups, but we can have six different groups, uh, groups representing just the United States, just the European Union, just India, China, then the developing countries um, and the other developed countries. And then they negotiate um, and come up with NDCs and propose it. And it kind of follows along that, the, the format of the, um, the UN climate negotiations. Um, and so there can be ways of bringing that in or just you know show people our, the other tool we have, C-ROADS. Um, so this training has been so focused on inroads, but we have other simulation model. I just pulled it up. This is C-ROADS. And so we can look at the contributions from different countries and regional groups uh, with this tool. So that can be something uh, particularly for educators who want to be speaking to COP, um, COP26, which is coming up here at the end of this year in Glasgow. Uh, great question. Let's see, what else um, might we speak to? How many groups would you recommend to use for a group of about 20 people? Um, so with the climate action simulation, we have um, a six group format and an eight group format, but honestly, you could come up with more groups. If you have the time, um, you saw that uh, today that with eight groups, it took, a, it took a while for us to go through each group, but we could start, if we had more time, uh, we could have more groups and you could come up with creative ideas for groups um, that weren't represented, represented, um, which would be really exciting. For about 20 people, I would probably stick, tick, stick to the six group format, just to make sure that there's a number of people in each group, you know, um, that gives you about three or four people per group. Um, so that, I feel like that would work out well. Um, and for smaller groups too, you know, you can play the climate action simulation, just have one person representing each group and try that out. Um, so there's lots of different ways to experiment there with that. Um, other questions that people see in the chat. Uh, the slides that I have used today, I believe are 
all a part of, and um, with the exception of maybe a couple at the very end, they're all a part of the standard slide, de slide deck that is um, that we use for the climate action simulation. And you can find that on our website, um, uh, climateinteractive.org, and then go to tools, climate action simulation game, and then go to the game materials and you can explore all the different game materials. And like so many of the resources that we provide, thanks to the um, uh, volunteer efforts, largely of a number of ambassadors and uh, fellow facilitators, we have materials available in many different languages. Um, here, there is a worksheet and we actually have um, climate action simulation materials in dozens and dozens of different languages from Albanian, Bosnian, Bulgarian, uh, across through Spanish, Greek, Lithuanian. Um, you can find it here and find briefing statements in a number of different languages if you're interested. Um, so even while we don't have like for Slovenian, for, ex for example, we don't have inroads in Slovenian yet, but we do have briefing statements. So just because the simulator itself may not be um, in the in a language that you're facilitating in look and we might have briefing statements um, that could at least help orient uh, your participants uh, to that so keep that in mind as well. Um, any other questions. Um, Laura mentions uh, pushback on terms developed developing and emerging. I hear you Laura we would love. We're, we've 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 had lots of discussions about how how to best characterize different country groups, and um, uh, there are pros and cons with all the different kinds of uh, groupings that we've seen out there. And uh, we're happy for feedback and recommendations for ways to improve it. Uh, we're trying to come up with groupings that people can both um, uh, are both aware of and can get their head around, but are also just uh, yeah respectful and mindful of the vast diversity that is included whenever we kind of uh, group any big aggregate any any group of things together so yeah that is definitely one we um have have tangled with and if anyone has ideas for better grouping names send them our way we'll consider them um Uh, yeah, I see, uh, Sam, you're making, you're mentioning um, about the funds received from the carbon tax. We, yeah, we don't have that built into inroads. There's so many nuances uh, that would be really tr tricky to capture in terms of um, if we had revenue and we distributed it out to the different sliders. Again, keep in mind, inroads is global. Um, so, but that's where I think the climate action simulation, and and even if you're running just the workshop. Can be really rich in just bringing in that conversation. So if a carbon price is taking center stage within the game as it did today or in a workshop, um, talking about revenue and where it comes from can be very fruitful. Um, so uh, would just encourage um, you all to bring that into your facilitation. And also keep that in mind too as you move other sliders. Um, so for example, like for when we think about highly subsidizing renewable energy, um, you could prompt the discussion of like, okay, where could that funding come from? And uh, thinking about different mechanisms for that. Um, I see a question about um, using inroads in corporate sector. Um, yeah, we have lots of different examples, uh, not, not so many that are written up, but um, could somebody drop the link to the, the business page? for inroads um, there that points to a couple different webinars we've done um, where um, some of the different corporate partners that we have worked with who are using inroads um, both internally and in terms of larger different kinds of engagement um, how they have found inroads useful and um, it's it's a variety of things we've run climate action simulations for um, large companies as just kind of an internal uh, activity for them to build more climate literacy, and um, and then other and uh, in other cases, um, it has been used in kind of strategy development for companies. Um, so 
look does someone have that uh link to the inroads page on business yep i'll drop it in yeah thanks it's link two from here um perfect thanks caroline Thanks. Yeah. Um, any other questions or things? I'm scanning the chat, but um, I think from where I see, um, I think we've answered most of the the recent ones, especially with people who are still online. Cool. Yeah, I see some cool ideas in here. How can we? And if you see something that hasn't been folded in, we. We have learned so much over the years from the innovations that uh, from others, uh, people who've taken this tool and run with it in really creative ways. And so I'm really excited to see what you all might be dreaming up and coming up with. I see Rigo mentioning uh, linking it with the SDGs um, in a simulation. That's a great idea. Um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Sunny, you're asking about ecocide laws. I don't think we we don't really have a slider that would really um, dive just into that. Um, so I would say it's probably not captured in En-ROADS, but that's a that's something again. You know, when things aren't captured in En-ROADS, I think it it's a, it's a door and an invitation for you as a facilitator to figure out other ways to weave it in. You know, um, think about how you might set things slides up or or add it to the discussion. We don't want uh, you to get kind of. Uh, limited in what you might bring up within these conversations, just because it's not within inroads. Uh, we can't capture everything with this tool and and aren't really trying to either. Um, so uh, that's where we look to you all to um, be facilitators to bring in all kinds of innovative ideas, legal action. Yeah, I would say legal action of, of different sorts could like, and I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago too, um, when someone was act asking as well about civil society movements. So I think of things like legal action, passing laws, they're wrapped up in how we scale up technology. Um, so for example, we have this new zero carbon slider. For new zero carbon to be successful, there are gonna need to be uh, utility regulations adjusted. Um, local regulations might need to be you know, uh, passed and changed and amended. Um, so different kinds of um, legal strategies, they help um, kind of make it easier to move the sliders around. Just like you can think of civil society action, protests um, might make it easier to uh, um, protest in support of uh, re renewable energy or protest against coal would make that tax on coal uh, more, more easy to implement. So it kind of is like the grease of the sliders, that kind of thing. Um, and so I think about legal action in, in that kind of camp too. If we have lawsuits and um, different kinds of things going after the fossil fuel companies, um, that that's expensive for them and adds to their overhead costs and that kind of thing. All right, everyone, um, why don't we wrap it up here? Thanks so much for the great discussion. Thank you all uh, for your great participation today. It was a lot of fun. I uh, really enjoyed having you all here and the proposals from all the team leaders were wonderful. Um, thanks and uh, take care.